I am Ruth Ann Thorne, and I've been an art dealer for more than two decades, working with artists from all over the world. I've always wondered, do artists create from within, or are they influenced by their surroundings? And why do they choose where they live? What do they get from their environment? If they were to live somewhere else, would their art be different? These are the questions we will answer as we explore cities across the country in Art of the City. New Orleans is an incredible city filled with art. And there's one artist that I've always wanted to meet, Brandon Odom, otherwise known as B-Mike. He's one of the most important and most recognized artists of the city. Here's one of his beautiful murals in the background. And he has new projects coming up. We're gonna go into his studio and hear all about those. I've been a big fan. I've been following you on Instagram. I've read all kinds of amazing articles. So I just kind of want to start it out by asking you a little bit about how you grew up and your life here in New Orleans. Actually, the space right now is called Studio B. Right across the street is the high school that I attended called NOCA, mm -hmm. New Orleans Center of Creative Arts. And that is the space where if you're interested in anything artistic from musical theater to film and video to uh, photography, jazz, poetry, you go there. So after I graduated from that space, I was pretty much done with visual arts. So I thought, you know, I was like, okay, this is cool. I know how to do it, but I don't see a reason for me to continue doing it. So I went to college for filmmaking actually. And I thought that's what I would do for the rest of my life. I figured I would, I felt I had a better understanding of how to use my creativity in the space of video and film than I did in the space of art. Hurricane Katrina hit in 2005. Of course, everyone was displaced. I left the city, went to Austin with the family. And then once the city made a call that everybody can return, my family was like the first in line to return. And so my people were like, we're back, we're here. And I was like, yo, like this is not what I want to do. Being here in the space that literally felt like it was just, like nothing was happening. It was like a, a desert in a way. So I moved to Atlanta uh, for two years where I continued to like grow as a videographer, start doing a lot of music videos and things like that. Did that for a series of years and really began to grow as a videographer in terms of music videos. I was directing music videos from any rapper in New Orleans. I probably did their music video as well as musicians in general, like Trombone Shorty to Currency to Mystical, Lil Wayne, like all wow. these people. I was so I felt like that's what I was doing. I was excited. It was exciting, I should say. But then it got real repetitive really fast. But one thing that I did get attracted to in the process was artists were always looking for these abandoned, derelict places to as a backdrop. Because post Katrina New Orleans, everybody wanted that like danger vibe. Mm -hmm. So I, it became a practice for me to search for these, you know, location scout on my own, just like go find these abandoned spaces, dig deep into the parts of New Orleans that was not uh, traveled anymore. And it was in those spaces that I began to get reintroduced to graffiti. You know, you go deep into like, in a warehouse and you're like deep, deep into it. And all of a sudden you see this beautiful piece. And I was just amazed by it because it broke all the rules of what I thought art was supposed to do. So I started going back in these spaces, not with my camera, but with some spray cans. I was like, I'm gonna try it. And that began this process of me exploring spray paint as a medium to create. And so I like to say spray paint really like reintroduced me to, to art. What I love about murals is that it's a full, like, full body thing, you know what I mean? Right. I'm not just using my arms and my hand, like I'm really, it's like a choreographed dance in a way where 
I have to be fully in tune with what I'm doing because if I'm not, then I'm probably going to make a mistake that could be really cost effective to my body or, you know what I mean? Right. So this is a really incredible and I feel like you're capturing the energy of all mm -hmm. those amazing people that were here. I like to think of what public art can do in terms of bringing people together. And normally it happens organically in terms of if you paint a mural on the wall, people would, would interact with that wall again. Um, but being that this is in front of a park, I felt even more responsibility to try right. to tell a large story. There are people that come and help you yeah, execute yeah, it? Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, and sometimes the beautiful thing about painting in New Orleans is that people pull up and they'll just be like, yo, I saw it on Instagram, you want some help? Um, I, there's a mural literally a few blocks down that I have, and that mural became like a community mural because everybody just kept stopping by. And so one day I was just like, yo, look, whoever stops, here's some paint help, you know, so. That's so great. I come from a, a very direct example of what it looks like when you understand that what you create can be used for others or done for others. You can talk about all the problems that New Orleans have because, you know, we're like a petri dish of the you know, worst of type things, you know, prison capital of the world, you know, education issues, housing issues. But yet that doesn't define us because we've been able to transform all of those painful things into something beautiful. Art has always been about, okay, how am I gonna create something to survive? Not to survive in terms of economics, but to survive in terms of sanity, to yes. survive in terms of how do I deal with the pressures of being, you know what, my art is gonna allow me to survive. My yes. song is gonna allow me to survive. My creativity, my dance, all these things. What, has there been anything that you personally would be willing to share that art has been your medicine, if you will? Yeah, I think it's always like art is always like the, the first line of defense, if you will, in terms of dealing and processing and asking questions for me. So even specifically in this space, there's a room completely dedicated to, to the, the idea and the moment of Hurricane Katrina. So this wall right here is really this conversation around um, the water line and everything below that line being erased and, and destroyed um, in terms of what it means to think about um, this moment of, of erasure. And so everything below that line is pretty much over with it's done. And this is profound though, it really, I mean, because of how, how spacious it is, you really yeah. get the feeling of what would it be like to have your entire house and all of your belongings covered with that much water. I think art at its best does two things. Like Nina Simone said, she said it's an artist's duty to reflect the time. So I think art has to, in a lot of ways, be reflective of what's actually going on. Mm -hmm. So we're a mirror in a lot of ways to what's mm -hmm. happening. But I think on the other side of that, there's also that this idea that art has this ability to imagine what isn't there. So we have this responsibility, this responsibility to create the things we wish to see. So we're reflective of what actually happens, but we're also imaginative about what should happen. And with that, I think there's always this thin line of hope in, the, in what you create. There's always this like this this thread of, of hope in the process. And that's something that I'm always conscious of within the process. Um, that makes it really therapeutic for me because it's like, okay, I can imagine what this should look like and have the agency to explore that without fear, mm -hmm. you know? And I think that's a very empowering part of the process. Today was incredible meeting this artist, Brandon Odom from New Orleans, otherwise known as B Mike. The way that he has passion for the arts and pouring out to the community and bringing this sense of hope back to people when they've gone through some, you know, very tough tragedies. I hope to meet him again and I was really completely amazed by what he's doing and what he has to say through his work. This city, New Orleans, is like no other place in the world. And we were fortunate enough to meet artists that have resided here and have taken the energy of the city and transformed that into artwork that is going to affect the world forever. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you join us for the next Art of the City.
Thank you.